friends! Today we're going to be discussing a piece of theater news that was announced earlier this week. Now I need you to brace yourself because when I saw this headline I immediately went through the five stages of grief. Matthew Morrison is the Grinch now! 2020 has just been like so crazy, a global quarantine, the presidential election, murder hornets? But Matthew Morrison playing the Grinch is just not a square I had on Apocalypse Bingo. So let's talk about it. If this is your first time seeing my face, hi! My name is Kat and I really like musicals. If you really like musicals, hit subscribe to join the musical theater internet cult. First we take over Broadway and then the world. Today's video is sponsored by Tula, a really cool skincare company that I've been using for quite some time now, so thanks Tula. Question of the day. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> It's just me like having a breakdown. That's the question of the day. No, but seriously, what are your thoughts on all of this? How the Grinch Stole Christmas the Musical, a musical during quarantine, Matthew Morrison? Let me know in the comments down below. Now, before we jump into the video, I want to make something abundantly clear. I like Matthew Morrison. I don't know much about him personally, but I think he's a really great performer. If you've been on my channel for any length of time, you've heard me simp for Light in the Piazza. So please know that I am indeed Team Mr. Grinch Daddy. If this is the first you're hearing about this, let me fill you in. In a shocking turn of events, NBC has announced their next live musical broadcast less than a month before its premiere. On Tuesday, November 10th, they announced that How the Grinch Stole Christmas the Musical would be turned into a televised special event starring none other than Glee's Matthew Morrison. The cast includes Tony Award winner Dennis O'Hare as a dog. It also stars Boo Boo Stewart of the massively successful Descendants franchise also as a dog. Okay, to be fair, they're playing playing the same dog. That's right. Two actors for one role and it's a dog. Like I understand that Max the dog it kind of seems serves as a narrator in this iteration of the show, but I just love the concept of like what if every show you saw had two different adult actors playing a dog? Like young Sandy and old Sandy in Annie, not Grace. For the finale of Grease, Sandy walks out and she's just like rapidly aged like 65 years and she's like, come here Danny Zuko boy. The production will be aired from the Troubadour Theatre in London on December 9th on NBC. And boy, the internet had some thoughts. Can you guess how they felt? I went over to Facebook to see what people were saying and I think my favorite reaction came from a woman named Maria who commented on like Playbill or Broadway.com's article and Maria commented, hasn't this country suffered enough? But I think the most roast worthy moment of this whole debacle came from this headline from Vulture. And you might be thinking, whoa, that's like unnecessarily mean and I agree. It's like really awful and really mean. So what could have influenced Vulture to write that kind of headline? TikTok, it was almost for sure TikTok. One big thing the TikTok algorithm keeps trying to push me is Matthew Morrison hate talk, which if you don't know what that is, it's exactly what it sounds like. Now, I wouldn't consider myself a member of that community and I think that's because I never watched Glee. That's right, I've only seen two episodes of Glee ever. The first episode when it premiered shocked me to my core as a very very innocent child, so I was a little too scandalized to continue watching. And then the other episode I watched was the Rocky Horror episode, which I'm sure was much more family friendly. But in the last couple of months, maybe year, I'm not sure, time has no meaning anymore, Glee and specifically Matt Morrison's character, Mr. Shu, have been popping up all over social media and not in a good way. <laughs> it's a meme now! I guess a lot of the decisions his character made on the show kind of ranged on a sliding scale of like really morally questionable to just straight up cringy, like your uncle two beers deep at a family barbecue trying to dance. I love Glee Club! I think a small percentage of people actually aren't his fans, which is fair, but the vast majority of people are clowning on his character from Glee, not actually him. So Matt Morris meme is the Grinch now. But I just want to know why? Because he might quite literally be the last person I would guess to be cast as the Grinch. Like I would probably guess Lena Hall before I guessed Matt Morris, and that's a credit to Lena's range. Because because I would watch Lena play anything and everything and buy a front row seat. And it's not a question of talent either because I think Matt is a fantastic performer. Just because we haven't seen him in a character like this before doesn't mean that he can't play it. I bet he'll be fantastic. But I think this is just so weird for me because I wasn't expecting it. Like Matthew Morrison is typically this handsome, heroic, elegant leading man and now he's playing this like tiny furry green little Christmas Yeti in a mountain. It's like if Brad Pitt was cast as gritty 
in the gritty biopic, which I absolutely want to be real now. Like, let's make that happen. And if Brad's not available, maybe they can get Lena Hall to do it. I just feel like this happens almost every time there's a movie musical or one of these live TV musicals. Like, there's such a disconnect between the studio executives and what the audience actually wants. And granted, theater fans are difficult to please. We're very passionate, we're very opinionated, but like, overwhelmingly, it's just not what people want. I just want to know what series of events in the timeline led to Matthew Morrison becoming the Grinch, and a very real part of me thinks that maybe it's because of the memes. Like, I wonder if there's an NBC executive somewhere being like, out of all of the mainstream Broadway men, it seems like the kids are tweeting about Matthew Morrison a lot, so we should probably put him in a live musical. Oh, okay, sure, how about as Frank Butler in Annie Get Your Gun? Something newer. Okay, how about as Cinderella's Prince in Into the Woods? Too obvious. Okay, how about as Albert? in that production of Bye Bye Birdie Live that we announced like five years ago and then never mentioned again. The what now? You know, Bye Bye Birdie Live. Jennifer Lopez was gonna be in it. J-Lo. J-Law. The Hunger Games. I'm hungry. What do I want for lunch? Christmas cookies. I got it! Yeah? We're doing the Grinch. What? Matthew Morrison is the Grinch now. I think that's why this news is so jarring and weird because maybe it feels like it came from a very corporate calculated place. Like they just plugged in a bunch of random things Mad Lib style into an equation to see what would make them the most money. And this one. It's just so inexplicable. Like you're telling me that Alex Brightman, Andrew Rannells, Will Swenson, Gavin Lee, Wesley Taylor, and Christian Borle are all busy? You think they're hanging out together? Okay, all just joking aside, what are my actual thoughts on this? I'm really excited. Like, genuinely really excited. I'm grateful to have theater people employed on this project. I'm happy to have something special to look forward to for the holidays. I'm so excited to watch some live theater! The journey of these live network musicals has been a bumpy road to say the least, but maybe this is the way to do it. Make it into a family event, like family with a capital F. Lean into that fuzzy feeling of the holidays to help sustain this as a new tradition. Maybe the goal here isn't to be the pinnacle of live theater. Maybe they're trying something entirely different. They're bringing accessible, fun, family-friendly theater to the masses. Maybe this is a great way to introduce the arts to a younger generation. I've talked about this on the internet so many times, so if you've heard my spiel, forgive me, I'll try to keep it brief. But any way that you can make theater exciting and accessible to a broad audience, I am in 1000%. With the lack of arts education and funding, plus a general inaccessibility into the art form, I get really nervous about the future of theater. But I have a feeling that some little kid this holiday season is going to watch this broadcast and realize that's what I want to do. They're going to discover their calling. They're going to realize that there is a career for them. There's a purpose. There's a whole community just waiting for them with open arms. I mean, with Broadway being shut down until at least this summer, it can feel really bleak sometimes thinking about this industry. But knowing there's going to be theater that we all get to sit down and watch a musical together, I mean, it it feels like a Christmas miracle. Oh, wow, I am getting emotional, let's move on. Welcome to a new segment I like to call Me Time, brought to you by Tula. Skincare is one of my favorite ways to practice self-care, and boy, do I need it. I'm PMSing, I'm stressed, and admittedly, I was a little nervous to take off my makeup on the internet because of it. But guess what? Tula focuses on being healthy, not perfect. They want to empower everyone in their community to feel confident in the skin in there in now. Forget the before and after. Tula wants to remind you that you're always beautiful. And that's the most romantic thing I've heard in several months. Dating is hard. Tula is a doctor-founded, clean and effective skincare and wellness brand where 100% of the products are formulated with probiotics and superfoods. Their products are cruelty-free, never tested on animals, and <laughs> I'm so sorry, I can't get over that beautiful thing. What's the deal, Tula? Are you single? Are you human? I know I just said you're a wellness brand, but I feel like there's something between us. <clears throat> Go to Tula.com and use code CAT to get 15% off your Tula order. Again, that's code CAT for 15% off. And Tula, baby, I want to make this work. If you're a purifying facial cleanser, I'm a purifying facial cleanser. Call me. My phone number is 8 
ends the story of the Grinch and his sleigh, of Twitter and headlines and a musical play. And those who would meme and scoff and pray would soon cheer, for December 10th would be known as Matthew Morrison Day. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Give this a like and hit subscribe so that our cult might grow. Break a leg. I love you so, so much, you know. I need but one more Dr. Seuss rhyme. Crossbow. Bye.